Are you guys ready for the next topic? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is episode 387 of the Kid Contractor Podcast, which I would say is for everyone. <laughs> no matter who you are, it's for everybody. Uh, find what matters to your client. The price. Commercial landscaping. That's it. Yeah. But he's, I, yeah, I think he's saying find what matters to your yeah. client through a series of questions when you're, like, does it matter that the job site's clean? Because that's what matters a lot to some clients. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Like, one of our clients, this client came up to me when we started a job and he said, there's a street of nice houses. And he said, I need you to remember this the whole, and your crew to remember this the whole time you're here. And I said, sure, bro. What? And he said, you are a representation of me to my neighbors because I hired you and you better represent me well because I don't fuck around in my neighborhood. I don't shit where I eat and you better not either. And I said, okay, cool. And I was like, that's a really interesting take. And I think if more homeowners had that take that the contractor that I hire is a representation of me as a person, I think if more people thought about that, then there would be less fucked up landscaping. The dollar yeah. sometimes gets in the way. I think so. Yeah. But then, maybe not what, in this maybe not in this neighborhood, right? Right. In the neighborhood that he Well, there's not nothing saying he didn't want a competitive price. Like I don't think he would have paid anything for it, but in his mind, the most important thing to him as a client was that you are a representation of him. Mm -hmm. It was just a unique, I mean, I've had lots of people that the most important thing was the price or the most important thing was that the palmeric sand got hard and those clients suck. Like <laughs> they're the hardest to please of all clients. <laughs> like, uh, I'm just saying it was an interesting reason. The interesting reason for him, his, he thought we would be the best representation of him. So how, what do you think that says about your company image? Are you the polished company that, because we are not the polished landscape company whenever we show up at your house. As much as I would like to say, yeah, everything's perfect and proper. I got guys yelling and shit going yeah, all but sorts I, of ways. But also, and, I have all those things too, and I always have in the past. But I think for him, the trucks were clean. There wasn't garbage blowing down the street. Yeah. We didn't dump a load of gravel down the fucking sewer. We, like, we had pylons. We managed traffic when we were supposed to. No one pissed on his neighbor's house. Like those were the things that were important to him. Yeah. You know, there was a school working like behind us, and no one got accused of trying to pull kids into a van. Like <laughs> those were the kind of things that were important to him. I think that. So, I I do, I do are we were we the most polished? I absolutely don't think so. I know there's some highly polished landscapers in where we're from. Like these guys are on point every day, all day, branding, uniform. Yeah, the whole fucking these people are on point. I don't feel like we are those people. Imagine uh, the unicorns you've got to find for workers. For landscape workers that show up polished, clean. They don't stink yeah, but or dude, smell or swear or but if that if you set that as the expectation, you might have more luck finding that person. True, but in my experience, like you, you don't, have you no don't luck finding that person. Well, I mean, but you've never said I'm only hiring people who behave this way, or if you don't behave this way, you can't work here. Yeah. So it's hard, like if you brought in a whole bunch of golf shirts and said, if you don't wear this golf shirt, you can't work here. I'm going to guess most of the people that work for you would put the fucking golf shirt on. Yeah. It's In the lieu same... of golf shirts, we chose safety shirts, but that's just my, my image for the company or my thought for the company. Like I model us a lot on these old school contractors that are just out there to get the fucking job done. You know, like yeah. they're barely sliding by with health and safety and, uh, we're trying to be like a little more polished version of that, but I feel like those guys are what best uh, is the best match to what we're trying to do. 
and it, that might not be the the answer. That might not be the best way to run a company. No, but well, no, but oh, so there are things though that like you're talking about setting an expectation. There are things like your guys can't go to work on a commercial job without wearing a safety shirt and a hard hat. Yeah, correct. So at some point though, there was a point in history. Like I remember when I worked on commercial jobs and there was no hard hats and no vests and nothing. And then there was a day when people were like, okay, now you have to wear, when I first started, most people were running shoes to work. Ooh. Like, so then there was a day when someone came out and said, if you don't have boots, you, you can't work here. And then it just became the accepted norm that if you saw someone without boots, it was like fucking weird. Yeah. And, and now I would say that safety vests and hard hats are in the same classification as work boots. If you're on a commercial job and you see a guy wandering by without a hard hat, everybody on the site notices. Yeah. Like, well, while well, the electricians don't wear their any safety gear, I don't know what the fuck they're doing on the job. But well, they're electricians. Electricians. Holier so than thou. Don't they get to do whatever the fuck they want? Uh, yeah. Yeah. They sure don't, and their in laws are probably their in laws are probably proud of them, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many hours you have to put in to be an electrician? I have no idea. I've never a cared. master electrician nine thousand hours. Wow! You know how much landscaping you could do in nine thousand hours? Do you know, do you how, know many, how many how many patio how money star, you could make? Starry light patio lights you could make <laughs> not work in nine thousand hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the landscaper being an electrician, right? Yeah. Going out and doing the electrician's job for none of the electrician's money. And yeah. I didn't, until I was in a couple of those group chats, I did not realize how many problems there were with landscape lighting. I had no idea. Everyone makes it out like it's the world's greatest thing. And I hate it. It's the fucking most pro. And if you're not doing it, you are insane. You are crazy if you're not doing this shit. And I am on board with you, Chad. I, If people say it to me, I'm like, hire some landscape lighting person. I'm not fucking getting involved in it, period. Because I don't want to rip the fucking patio apart to fix this bullshit yeah. where you make $100. Like, I, I love just, landscape I'm lighting. Fucking not worth it. I hate it. I hate and it. And so I'm on the same page with Chad. I know, Mike, that there is many people in your court being a part of that chat and looking at the absolute <laughs> devastation that this shit was causing to these people's lives, companies, families, and jobs, I would never install that shit again. I would never install those lights that you core drill in the middle of the patio. That that has never like crossed my mind. I've never wanted to sell that. But that just came from experience at my supplier days and never wanting to get involved with that, those. And also you don't want light, you don't want lights outdoors shining in your eyes, even if they are like glossed over or whatever. So you just try to hide the light as best as possible. But that's always been my understanding of landscape lighting design. Other than the fact that it's a lot of work and I don't feel like, well, maybe we just don't, we wouldn't price it accordingly. Like we, we would definitely fuck up our pricing when it comes to lighting, but I can imagine, you know, because we've done it before and I'm like, this isn't worth it. No matter what we charge, it's not worth it. Um, but I can imagine getting a call from a client and it's eight or nine o'clock at night and they say, well, this light's flickering or this light's not coming on. Can you come and check it out? But they don't want you to come in the daytime to check it out. They want you to see it at night at eight or nine o'clock in the fucking evening. <laughs> And yeah. that's the last thing I want to do ever is be at my client's place at eight or nine o'clock unless it's to collect the check and say, see you never. <laughs> like, well, I don't want to be there. See you in nine years, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nine nine years. Years. Well, lights do turn on in the daytime, so you can definitely go back in the day. Yeah, I know. But, oh, it's, it's not casting the right shadow at the right time. And I really hoped it would light up this tree better. So can you relocate it 10 feet this way? And absolutely, no, I can't. You know why? Because I'm not the lighting guy. Hire an electrician. But at the same time, I'm not the guy making all the money to do it, right? So um, I, I someone think... could be laughing all the way to the bank with it. 
but I feel like it, you have to have a passion for it. Like Mike, I feel like you're passionate about landscape lighting. Yeah, I mean, you need some sort of light in the in the backyard, especially if you're doing a beautiful outdoor living space, right? Because that's when most people are out there enjoying it. So I sound like a sales rep. What am I? Yeah, you, you sound <laughs> like a sales rep. What's your brand of choice, Mike? <laughs> I won't say it here on the podcast. We won't go there. No free advertising. Yeah, I. So maybe my problem with the lighting situation is that I don't go outside at night. That would be a, <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, we have a beautiful patio and a swimming pool. I, this entire year, I, sometimes I look at it through the back window or if periodically, if I'm the one that lets the dogs out, I look at it and I go, Oh, that's a beautiful patio and pool. And then I close the curtain and go back to sitting on the couch. <laughs> and that's the truth. I hate being outside. And the last time I want to be outside is at night. These With people the that are fascinated being outside at night, it just boggles my mind, I guess. You need a gas fire feature. We have one. Do you? In the middle of our table. Yeah, it's a gas fire feature. It's beautiful when it's on. What like what are you doing out there? That's what I don't get. Like, are you like sitting around looking at a gas fire feature? Well, we have a balcony here. We don't so for have the a... record, for the record, I have built millions millions of dollars <laughs> of outdoor living spaces so just so we're all on the same page and i don't mean like a couple million dollars i bet i'm in 25 30 million dollars worth of high-end outdoor living spaces that i've built in my lifetime so, now i'm saying i don't understand my people so when <laughs> you show up you show up to a beautiful backyard project they've got it planned and everything and you say why the fuck would you want to do that and you just completely Take yourself out of the job. Well, no, I just, when I go those places and I look at those projects, I just assume that those people want something different out of their life than I do. And that's okay. Yeah. And I feel like over the years, I've built a good reputation for providing good service and building quality projects and creating spaces people are happy with. Just because I wouldn't go in those spaces doesn't make them bad. <laughs> True. Like, I just, yeah. I don't, I, I, when we first built the patio, it has a nice shelter. It has a, uh, a table with a fire. It's got Kelly bought nice furniture. We've got a smoker and a big gas barbecue, a pool, a shed, AstroTurf, river rocks. It's pretty nice, man. But, but I wouldn't, only, I wouldn't go out there. <laughs> the only reason I'm going to have a nice landscape at my home, my new home, when we build, is because I feel like I'm expected to, and because I could do it more cost effectively than if I didn't know how to do it, right? I don't necessarily love Are you going to put a pool either. in? Yeah. How yeah. often do you use the pool you have? Uh, my kid is in it daily. Uh, okay. I'm not talking about your kid. I'm Why? talking how she's often part have, of the family? No. I'm saying <laughs> no, you. she's not. <laughs> no, she is part of the family. Obviously, <laughs> I'm saying you as a grown adult without your child. How many times have you gone out at night to go for a swim? Not this at day? night. Not anymore. No, those days are long past. But um, you there was a time when you would there was a time. You'd come home and be like, fuck yeah, I can't wait to get on a swimsuit and go get wet outside of my backyard. What about at 4 a.m.? 4 a.m.? Instead of going to the gym, you you hop in the pool and go for a swim. Cold plunge. <laughs> <laughs> no. Cool. Uh, well, we have a heater, too. Our pool's heated. It's heater. nice. Yeah. Oh, it's heated. It's nice. Next time around, if you, I'll get if you someone If someone wanted to go swimming. <laughs> How much money do you spend a year heating that pool <laughs> that you don't go in? It's not as much as I spend on key investigations. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Uh, uh, I would estimate quite a bit. Quite a bit is spent yeah. on the fucking heating of the pool. Because we don't have a cover on it or anything. No, just burning money. It's just burning money away, I guess. When do I, you what time of the year do you close the pool? I don't know. Hopefully you don't do that. No, that we have someone come and close it. Oh, okay. I don't know how to do that. 
Here's so Who skims the pool. Kelly. Okay. I wouldn't do it. If it was me, the pool would be green because I would, <laughs> I try not to look out the back door. <laughs> Once I come in the house, I close that. Don't open the, like, don't open the curtains, man. I don't want to see what's out there. I got to go out there the next day and I got to do like really serious things, like figure out who broke the key off in the door. So like when I get home at night, I need a break from that level of intensity. I'm basically a New York City homicide detective. <laughs> we should do a live Not Our Finest Hour podcast in Mike's backyard. Sure. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, but PK I'm, can be inside on Zoom with inside. us. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many times have you gone to swim in the pool day or night by yourself? Without your daughter or your wife this year, chat. Twice. Two times. And it was likely after coming home from work, stripped down into my underwear, hop in the pool, then go in the house. Yeah. Mike, is there a pool in your condo? There is, actually. How many times have you used that pool in the last year? By never. yourself. I've never been in the pool, ever. Okay. When you moved into the condo, was one of the selling features like, fuck, we're going to have a pool. No, actually, it wasn't. You were just like, I don't give a shit about your pool. No, not don't at even all. show do it you, to me. Do you think you're charged excessive HOA fees? For I wouldn't be. Pool? It would be charged to the landlord, but uh, oh, yeah, I'm so sure yeah, that's yeah. marked up on our rent fee. So, yeah. So, you, I'm just, like, I'm just saying that where, where did this start off with? This was a Caleb. Is, had a, oh, I thought this was the excavator thing still. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> this is a Caleb topic. Uh oh, find what matters to your client. And we somehow we ended up talking about swimming pools. Okay. We can't not do one from backyard conversations with Craig Shelley. Uh well, here's episode 14. My story with Craig Sheller. <laughs> Maybe that's a topic we can discuss. <laughs> Uh oh, here's one. This is a I this is a great a, here's two good ones. I like both of these. One is the advantage of tilt rotators. Let's talk it. Let's talk it out. Chad. I was up. actually in a video for Rib Tilt Rotators. I wow. have a uh, a promo video. A, li a little promo thing coming out there. Not right. sure when it's going to be released. Who Did they come it? out to site to film you? Yeah. Well, they were filming my buddy Alan Shade, but I was there. I also have a tilt rotator, so I piggybacked on the video, and they asked me a bunch of stuff. And What was wrong with the tilt rotator control joystick thing to them? So they get loose. Um, there's little nuts underneath, and if you're not on top of tightening them, they get loose. And it Did that make the video? Fucking wild. No. No. <laughs> didn't make the video? <laughs> make the video. But it's the only thing that I absolutely can't stand about the tilt rotator so. here's another craig scheller episode episode 11 lights and life with jim fabric <laughs> hey jim you want to talk lights with not our finest hour podcast? <laughs> probably not uh so we're talking about the advantage of the advantage of tilt rotators chad do you how much more productive like your 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 shovel was 145 it's 50 grand for this tilt rotator. Yeah. So you're in 195. Yeah. If, let's say the shovel's production rate without the tilt rotator was a five out of 10. What yeah. is its production rate now with this tilt rotator on it? A nine out of 10, easily. Nine like, out of 10. Absolutely. So here to put it into perspective, we did this $120,000 ditch topsoiling job right so it was down both sides of the road i want to say uh two thousand feet three thousand feet down each side of the road and then a bunch of ditches at the back of the property same length so we're probably in it for thirty thousand feet i don't know it gets a the scope gets a little too much for me to to comprehend but Having the tilt rotator there, being able to spin it around 
and place the top toe where you want it without having to shimmy the shovel all over to try and get perpendicular to the job. Like easily saved us three weeks of work and a lot of wear on the machine to do with the tilt rotator. You couldn't do it any other way effectively with three guys. Right. How many guys would you need with a regular, with an old school excavator? Five guys, six guys. And so how many guys did you do it with? Three? Three guys, yeah. So let's say five guys. So two extra guys per day. I'm just going to say that your hourly rate is 80 bucks, Chad, because I know you don't sure. actually know it. So, Well, I know the hourly rates, but you guys aren't going to be impressed with those. So. Let's just say it's 80 times. So it's, you're saving, and how many weeks do you think it cut off the job? Three weeks. But you can't quantify the burnout, right? Like, if a raker can rake hard for eight hours a day, but They would have spent another four hours of that day shoveling before they raked, which now they don't have to do. So they can focus on just the raking part of their job. Like it's hard to quantify that. So essentially you saved in the minor part, not including the time you actually worked on the job. This is just the time you're saying you cut three weeks off the job and without a tilt rotator, you would have had five guys there every day. You saved sixty thousand dollars in labor by having a tilt rotator on that one job. I can see it, definitely. Like I'm, I'm, well, I'm just doing the math right. on eighty bucks an hour. Like so, yeah. You, you save, you save fifteen working days of five yeah. guys' time. You save, you save the cost of the tilt rotator in one job. Yeah, wow. and so that's sort that, of what I was. Yeah, I was talking to the the sales guys and shit like that, and they're like, when we tell people that, they don't believe us. I'm like, well, it's true. You do like. Like you just, if you can bite the cost of that tilt rotator and just buy it right out, then you're, you'll pay it off in one year. Like without a doubt in my mind, that tilt rotator is already paid off. Plus you're selling all your old buckets and shit and your thumb. And I made a couple of grand doing that. And, you know, so it's hmm. like just it. phenomenal. Yeah. Maybe I'll get one. I think you should. The content. I Someone tagged me in a flying pool video today. I guarantee it's from this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Earthworks or Earth? What's Earthworks, right? Nick? Nick. Nick. Yeah. He tagged me in it. Uh, okay. So, whoops. Come back here. So, let's. Oh, and our very last podcast topic of podcasts I have here would be uh oh we have two more to go through oh let's just do one more let's do the how to hardscape podcast Ooh. let's pick a topic quoting front walkways with paver king the landscape daddy i am a hardscaper what do you got there is a topic we could talk about let's ignore that one <laughs> uh financial here you can't find a good one uh well we could talk I am a hardscaper, Mark of Green Monster Landscapes, but I don't like. I don't think. Let's talk about financial coaching with John Pajak. Would you guys have a financial coach? Mm. I like to hear everybody's opinion on finances personally. Could you? Should you not lean on your accountant? Was that one too? I feel like, like that's a subtly different. I think financial coaching is like maybe more like planning for your future and okay so it's not business related or it is business could related. be both personal and right. business I, no even business related though like having a financial coach or someone who has a greater understanding of so i don't I, like i don't i don't i so we we don't have a financial coach but currently i'm thinking i mean i have a couple friends who are very good financially so i would know. love someone who could tell me what to do with my money, but I've watched far too many episodes of American greed to see people losing their fucking shirt by trusting other people with their money. Mm. So you should buy it, sort of... uh, cards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
not financial advice. Anybody who might be good with Bitcoin, maybe another and, landscaper and a, who's well versed in Bitcoin or something. Get some NFTs. Get some not NFTs. Fancy. Are those? I haven't heard that word in months. Is that still a thing? Well, those cards are NFTs. Oh, yeah. I think that financial coaching could be very beneficial to a business. You Absolutely. Maybe we should do financial coaching here with John Pajak on this episode. Because doesn't John Pajak have his own podcast? He does. Profits with Pajak. So maybe he would want to come on our podcast to promote his. Is that <laughs> maybe like we can do PK's uh, maybe, business finances maybe he, live. Maybe he knows better. And he <laughs> yeah. on podcast to promote his. Maybe he knows better than that. Uh, how about one more? One more. Outdoor Project Podcast. Let's see. What can we talk about? Where is a good bonus episode? Um, Are they posting? I, I'm just, the last one was May 8th. I'm just looking up here to see if there's an, ah, this is an episode I think we could actively discuss. Mainstream ramps, mainstream landscape, positivity in hardscaping. What do you guys think? I think positivity is always a good thing. <laughs> I think it's an oversaturated market of positivity. Is it? That's what I think. The last time I was on a hardscape job, like not a commercial job where we were doing some papers and stuff, but like a residential hardscape job where I was building shit and putting in steps and a fire pit and all this stuff. I had a fucking terrible time. I was the least optimistic person on that job and i knew what i was doing i just wasn't having fun doing it and i somewhere al- along the lines i'm like where did i lose it why is this not fun like it used to be like, I, uh, I wonder... well, partially because you're the business owner true and i've concluded that's not fun <laughs> <laughs> i don't i'm not saying people start their own business and they're like this is going to be fun as fuck. Like, <laughs> I don't think that people start businesses, but I think people don't realize how unfun it is. Hardscaping or business owning? Oh, both. Both. <laughs> yeah. I think that hardscaping is not fun. Uh, it has moments of funness. Uh, but I think business ownership is, you know, in my experience, a lot of, key investigations um trying to decide <laughs> where we're going to put the porta potty how long we're going to have the heat lamp on in the porta potty in the winter like that situation's about to rear rear rear, rear its ugly head at favorite king where are we plugging in this heat lamp that goes to the porta potty uh you know those are the kind of things that uh, potentially could happen you know um, I just, I think that there's a lot of like, not super fun ass business owner shit. I, you know, I, there's good days and there's good times. Absolutely. And there's times you're like, man, that's awesome. And then you're quickly blindsided by some key investigation. And but I can't, that's just a topic of my mind today, but I'm sure there's Is a it is it the business owner's job to inject positivity into the into the crew? Well, I know that. Or how main- do they find that positivity to keep going? Because uh, I think that some you need, days their job sucks. I I feel like you need to follow mainstream landscape for that answer. Honestly, like if you anyone spent any time following the guy's very. I, I said injecting, not inhaling. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't know what his company is like. <laughs> you do. You follow him. <laughs> no, I don't he's, actually. Oh, I, not, you guys send me the stuff there, but I, he's a very positive guy. Like he, he, yeah. I would yeah, say he that seems I like, would say yeah. he makes it his mission to inject positivity into his company. I would say that's a very strong um, strength of his just from the outside looking at the injection of positivity is the most important factor at the company. Like that's what defines his company is his boundless 
positivity. At least on social media, what we see. Are you trying to say that someone's doing No, I'm just saying that not, with social media, you, with, for everybody, uh, it's tough to get a good conclusion on somebody. So what you're sort of saying is if you were making a video about building a two-tiered wall, it might not actually be about how you actually built it? <laughs> I did see that somebody it's posted just, a comment about polymeric sand on my... Oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember what it was. I'm sure it was really positive. I'm sure <laughs> the it was. video was seven reasons why Paul Barrick said fails. And I get a comment from paver underscore king saying, You forgot to mention that the product sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot uh, to mention the product just sucks fucking ass. <laughs> Are we into the second hour? We're well into the second hour. Okay, let's watch this fucking video. Okay. Should we we should prep people for the video? Sure. What's let's the prep. video? So we started watching the video before we uh started here and we were waiting on PK to get his uh technical difficulties figured out. This is a video of uh, how do I describe it? Well, I think we would describe it as uh you know, we've obviously been a large supporter of uh, the landscape guru sector of uh, Instagram. And this is just a small video about the success of one of these gurus. Success. That was on the news. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, everything here is alleged, like nothing has gone to court or anything like that. And uh, just to remind anybody that may be listening in the future to this, this is a comedy first podcast, I guess we could say. Uh, what's that? A spoof or whatever. So don't take any of this. There's no so legalities what, behind this. And I would also say that this is from Fox 2 News yes. in, De in Detroit. We did not make this video. We're just watching the Fox 2 News report on one of the very well-known 10X Academy pool building guys, people. And we're just going to react to the video um and how it and it's you know how it uh how the how fox news in detroit use him and this is not our and you know it was not necessarily how we view him it's definitely got everything to do with fox news so. <laughs> you're much better at covering our ass than i am <laughs> with your wording pk it's like you've well, done this before I, maybe <laughs> a couple of times I, like, I have like and like every time we use a dump site uh, for Phil, I always pay for it, right? Because once there's been an exchange of money at the dump site, if someone ever calls me up, I'd be like, listen, I paid that person. That's their problem. So I have like exacting records of in my cell phone of every dump site we've ever used, every load of Phil we've ever dumped. And people always pick on me, and I'm like, well, I'm just covering my ass like I am by mentioning that this video about this person came from Fox News Detroit to Fox to Detroit.com. So and fair use of this video does dictate that we do need to pause it every once in a while and uh, talk about it so so that we make it transformative, so that we make it our own. The so, Academy. Uh, Fine I'll go private back to the beginning jet. on this. Okay. Uh, gas and uh, can't wait to see who it's about yeah of success all right here we go this guy is supposed to build pools in people's backyards and the stuff he posts on his website blogs podcasts and social media pages makes it look like he's floating on an ocean of success hey there brandon Rob Walchick for Fox 2. Can I talk to you? Meet Brandon Heitman. <laughs> so that's who it's about. Oh. oh. Never heard of him. I don't know In who case he you is. didn't know. Well, he's we'll learn more a, about him. He's driving a Denali. Yeah. Hey, Brandon Heitman here. We can get you a new swimmer. Billionaire contractor. And 
school builder who's taken the plunge and made a fortune. What a success story from mowing lawns for $20 to $1 million projects. Oh, let's go. Let's roll. Love checks. Love checks. Got a lot of money coming in and a lot of money going out. This 30-year-old entrepreneur is so successful, he's a mentor to other contractors around the nation. Uh, yeah, interesting, right? Well, I think that, you know, him being a mentor to other contractors around the nation is certainly a interesting. And he, well, I mean, right away, in this video, I personally feel like there's a bit of questionability here because I know that the listeners can't see the video. But this guy bought a fucking Volvo triaxle. So right there, <laughs> should fucking get rid of this fucking loon. Like, <laughs> fucking taking his picture in front of a Volvo. Look at me or, with my fucking Volvo shit box. Like, he's fuck not that. a truck consultant. Oh, fucking motherfucker. <laughs> fuck this guy. Maybe he needs a truck consultant. He, he, needs, he needs a goddamn truck consultant. So. Uh, attracting sales. I'm just reading what the, the uh, board behind him says. Attracting sales. Uh, Good leads, confidence, referrals, relationships, social sales. It says obscure TV, product marketing, clothes. Okay. Observe TV or something? I, I don't know. A... Closure TV. Observe TV. Obscure, I, I think. It, it looks like obscure. Yeah, you're yeah. probably right. Yeah. Attracting probably sales. Right. But there's a lot, yeah, lots of videos on his uh, cars and stuff, which look really nice. Lambos? And talking about money and everything. So they did a good deep dive on him to, to do this yeah. video. Yeah, this is a pretty deep dive. Seven minutes of it left. Let's go. Let's go. Yep, you can be like Brandon by joining the Heitman Academy, flying in private jets, visiting exotic places, building pools. Let's dive in and check out some of this guy's masterpieces. Like this still unfinished gunite beauty, which was supposed to be completed more than a year ago. It's such a unique design, it won't even pass code. 75% 10 foot deep end and hardly any shallow end. He doesn't know what he's doing. Glass pool. He 10 x that. Every day. <laughs> He did 10x that deep end. That's right. 10 feet, 10x. <laughs> what about this fiberglass pool? Did he 10x it? Because the owners say it's sagging in the middle and sinking. Our pool is essentially garbage. It needs to be torn out and started from scratch. Or how about this pool? Oh, that's right. There is no pool here, even though this couple paid Brandon $60,000. Everything that's pool no. was a lie. <laughs> There's no pool here, even though we paid Brandon sixty thousand. That, that guy looks like he just got out of the pool, though. That's funny. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. This guy in this video, he doesn't look like someone you want to fucking rip off. He's got a little Christopher Molisante tune to him there. This guy in the video, like he just, he doesn't seem like someone you want to fuck with. I just the slick hair, the big gold chain. The chain looks like it's pulled on a chair of patios. I wonder. If, <laughs> I wonder where his backup chain is. <laughs> Brandon is a special businessman. He even cried like tears, like he's when he wanted me to give him more money. Crybaby contractor. He started crying. I live in Huckster. He's um, super arrogant. Get ready for 2023. Now is the time to grind. It's Sink or Swim with Brandon Heidman. You need to be willing to get outside the comfort zone. Going outside his comfort zone and maybe going straight into a jail cell. This they've done him pretty dirty in the, the clips that they've dug up already. Yeah, this guy's not looking great in this video. Like I What What lesson do you think he teaches you to cry in in the academy? <laughs> like well, yes. he's teaching you to always keep an onion in your palm. <laughs> <laughs> Juice up the tears to get the money. If you uh, get the money, I feel so. I think there's an argument that of the people they've interviewed, the people who gave him sixty thousand dollars to do nothing to their house are actually the winners in this. Because of the they're, work. they're well, no, they're done. Their sixty thousand dollars is lost and done. 
some of these people, like this one they're showing right now, the pool is garbage and they've got yeah. installed and it's garbage and they've probably got more than $60,000 invested, but they still need to pay to fix it. Yeah. So yeah. really the people who gave him $60,000 and he did nothing, they have the best case scenario for dealing with this guy in my mind. So in actuality, he did them a favor by doing nothing. Yeah. In the end. <laughs> yeah. And maybe that'll be his argument. So he really is a good guy. Maybe it'll be his <laughs> argument argument in court. Hey, I fucked you the least. I didn't do anything at your fucking house. I don't know. I, do, you, do you at all feel sorry for this guy? The clients? No, the guy. I don't know. It's too hard to be a judge of character just from, like I said, Instagram it's a, videos. It's, we're only seeing, well, are we only seeing the one side or are we not? Well, now we're seeing kind of both sides uh, and I'm sure there's another side. Did, did we all not envision that this side was there though? Yes. Regardless of whether we saw it or not, this is the most likely do you do you feel sorry for this guy that's what i might like i don't feel sorry for a lot of people who have done a lot less i don't feel like, sorry I for don't... him at all like he created his own hell and then instead of working his way out of it he kept just stealing more yeah. essentially stealing more money from people yeah double down on it well that's what this video is i think telling me but i don't know for sure let's let's roll the tape this is becca and alex's pool they paid brandon hypen's company exigen a of Shelby Township, more than $100,000 to install it. But they say the fiberglass crooked. Stress and won't pass inspection. Ooh. The way someone explained it to me is they said, take a Rubbermaid tote that you know you use downstairs for storage and turn it and twist it. Water. Uh, my computer's too Same slow, amount of guys. tension on every part of that Rubbermaid tote. They say Brandon Heitman was too busy making videos promoting himself to help them. Soon they found out the guy who is teaching others successful contract wasn't even a licensed contractor himself in fact he didn't get his license until march of 2023 i went and pulled the permits that's when we discovered that they were unlicensed the permits were pulled by somebody named henry bell a licensed contractor the couple say they've never met who's never stepped foot work for exigent alex put together this website to document how terrible their experience has been but instead of brandon coming out to help them fix their pool he sued them for defamation Ooh, going on the offensive do you think that when you go on the offensive that's the last stage of guruism <laughs> there's a course on that well there's going to be a course on debt restructuring at the heitman academy <laughs> Today they paid him $122,000. The end says she's humiliated by how badly she was heisted by Heitman. I asked him specifically if he had a license. He said yes. There's plenty of holes in that story. Here's the main one in her backyard. Pipes are cemented in that are too small. The elevation is off. Holy sh And it's been like this for two whole summers. She told Brandon she's had a enough. Fuck. Brandon Two years. This See, is she's, pool. she's way more fucked than the people who gave him 60 grand to do nothing. Yeah. 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 He you have a hard enough. time selling that house. Enough, enough money to bring it up to code. I'm, I'm not the bank. We've paid you for this. And he started crying, saying he's really in a tough spot. Brandon used the crybaby contractor act on Joe and Angela as well. He started crying they paid boo hoo and brandon sixty thousand dollars for a pool that was supposed to be done this april but the only thing they have to show is this ridiculous looking diagram of a pool built into the side of a hill next to their house and get this brandon and the couple were actually friends here they are at one of brandon's wedding parties joe asked his friend what have you bought with my with my money and what does he say i don't have it but Brandon did have lots of fancy stuff, a new house in Macomb, a Lamborghini. Remember, this is a guy who posts videos about how successful he is. That's where, like, feeling hard for him is difficult. Yeah. It's tough to feel bad for a guy who does flaunt it like himself. that. Yeah. 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 Academy. Do you yeah. Think, hold on. Do you, do you think... 
So the stuff he had written on the paper when we were reading it, that's real shit. Do you think if you actually followed the Heitman Academy program and did the things these now he's not doing the stuff in the program. He's just marketing and scamming up allegedly by Fox News to from Detroit. But if you actually did the stuff he's saying to do, like real marketing, real closing of sales, you might be able to be a successful contractor if you did your chances of achieving the Lamborghini lifestyle are slim, but I'm just saying, like maybe there's if you were actually doing it, clearly he wasn't because he wasn't completing the work. You could be a good salesperson, just provide a very, very poor product, right? Yeah. And that's what will put you out of business. Or you can read as many sales books and regurgitate that or go to as many sales conferences or pay as much how, people, mentors as you want. And How much of the shit that these people spew, these gurus on Instagram, do you think is shit that was written by that chat bot thing that we fucked with one year? <laughs> oh, I'm being serious. Like, because uh, you yeah. can just type in what was it? What's it called, Mike? Chat GPT. Chat GTP. You could type in <laughs> you sell, so, whatever it is. So you could I type in this... sell pools. Yeah, and then it would produce you like ten thousand words on selling pools, and then you just read it. You could say all those things, but I think the secret sauce here is the tears, right? Because the AI doesn't cry, but he does. The so AI, think- this that's episode should be called The AI Doesn't Cry. <laughs> <laughs> 100, 100 episodes of the Not a Finest Hour podcast. The AI Doesn't Cry. <laughs> that should have been the quote that you sent to Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> not my knockoff paper king quote. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start promoting the AI doesn't cry as my yeah. own quote. That didn't come from Chad. That came from me. <laughs> All right, three more minutes, guys. Brandon teaches how to dodge judgments. He is good at that. Attorney Dan judgment against Brandon. The court is ordering uh, Mr. Heitman and his company to pay the X amount of dollars that was at issue. And has he paid anything? No, no, he has not. How much did Joe Rigaldo get stiffed? He gave him the full $81,000. So he gave him $81,000 up front to build the pool? That's correct. A similar agreement was made with a guy named Mark Shamaya. Brandon agreed to pay him back $67,000 for a pool that was never even started. Seems like Pool Boy is drowning in debt. His solution? Make more videos. Oh, no. Hey, Brandon here. Let me tell you why you need Oh, am I gone? You're back. Can you guys hear me? You're you're back. Yeah, you're good. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, my my computer's struggling through this, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Invest in your new outdoor <laughs> living space today. And it must have worked because just two weeks ago, a couple in Gross Point say they gave him seventy-five thousand dollars for a new pool. This is what they have so far. Little did they know Exigent was filing for bankruptcy. It happened just last week, a week after Brandon Heitman was arrested and charged with two felonies, taking more than $50,000 under false pretenses and fraudulent use of the builder's contract fund. He bonded out of jail on $30,000 cash. And remember, when he drew up the contracts on all these pools, the millionaire contractor didn't even have a contractor's license. Their permits were all pulled by someone named Henry Bell. What's he got to say about it? I went to his house and left cards. <laughs> Fox 2. Looking for Henry Bell. But Henry's never contacted me back. That's shocking. <laughs> Why does he always have his hand under his shirt? He's packing a gun because it's Michigan. But he's touching his nipples. Uh, who? Oh, you're talking about oh you're talking about Brandon Heitman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about the Heitman. Oh. According to their website, this is the headquarters of Exigent Design and Build. But we found out they haven't been here for years. But I did find him at this workyard on 23 Mile in Shelby, <laughs> pacing around. Again. <laughs> business on the phone, or maybe he's mentoring a student from the Heitman Academy. Must be a nervous Time for me to dunk pool boy. Can I talk to you? What's that? Talk to my attorney. Thank you. 
Oh, his his keys no, are gone I'll too. I'll talk to you right now. Couldn't get in that door. He's got a key problem just like PK. <laughs> hang on, hang on, man. Hey, come on. Here, talk to me. What's going on with your business? You talk to my attorney, thank you. Well, I want to talk to you. Great offer. Well, what's going on with your business now? You're a talkative guy. I've seen your videos. Thank you. Don't run away from pressure. How's the Heitman Academy going? <laughs> Why don't you give back the money to the, the $60,000 <laughs> to Angela and Joe? Come on, Brandon. Talk to me. He's only driving an Audi. What Roll the your fuck? window down. Audis are the worst drivers. Here, you want to take drivers. my business card? You can have your Thank attorney you. contact you. Who's your All attorney? Right. Thank you. I, I'll have them call you. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Brandon, come on in. The water's perfect here in the Hall of Shag. Now, Rebecca and Alex tell me the lawsuit Heitman filed against them has been dropped, but Brandon's legal problems keep building. Besides his company filing for bankruptcy, civil suits, and the two felonies he's been charged with, Shelby Township Police say they're investigating more cases. And yeah, that's the end. Mm. Uh, Allegedly. Right? Allegedly. Because... Well, people like that always come back. Do you tough. think they give up after once? I don't. America is a big place, man. So is Canada. Just move to another state, run the same game. I, you know, when yeah. no one's heard of you, you can probably change your name. I mean, maybe you have a bit more trouble with the Instagram thing, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think that's you, the big play, though, right? That's the money maker, selling the uh, the lifestyle, the, acad the academy. This guy has a chance in hell of turning this thing around. No. Never. Well, I just because people I don't make think mistakes. Do you think it is he too far gone? Allegedly, I, I wouldn't I know where to start. To be honest, how well, and the, the secondary problem is: does he actually know how to build anything properly? Right. Well, there's courses for that. <laughs> <laughs> you should go to his there's academy. A, there's academies for that. <laughs> there is academies. I don't. I don't think even if he woke up and was like, I'm going to make this right. I don't think there's no glamour and no glory in going around and making it right. There's no Lamborghinis. There's no Audis. There's no, I mean, the guy is bankrupt and going to jail and he's still driving a like completely jacked up Audi. Yeah. Like he's bankrupt and going to jail. Like, who knows how many times he's missed payroll. Right. Like you're just talking about the problems that he's had. How much money does he own the owe the government? I wonder how much uh that bill guy is in hot water there. The, the guy, the guy that was doing the permits. permits. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> like that's a whole different, you know, and like how much does he owe in source deductions and taxes and or whatever they call that in the state? Like it's just because all, all that money was being spent on Lamborghinis and expensive trips and bottles of wine and private jets and and it's all separate. documented. <laughs> yeah, it's all documented. <laughs> it's not like you can say that never happened. Oh no, there's plenty of videos in that video but that Fox just shared there. The people who were his like friends from a wedding and gave him the money, I'm like, what? Well, like really? Like I feel bad for them, but uh, wow. Yeah. I don't like working for people I know and I like to think I'm a good contractor, right? Could you imagine being an awful contractor and knowing you're fucking someone out of their money and standing I mean, there so, and smiling? But I think about sometimes it. these people don't realize that they're like they they in their brain they really think like that guy who's been fucking that person around on that cement pool for two years, in his brain he probably really believes that he's gonna make that right. The unfortunate thing is the like tens of probably hundreds, thousands of dollars he's put into mentors online. And now if he needs advice, they'll be like, yeah, we can give you advice. Just 25,000 more dollars and we'll hop on a call with you and give you advice on how we can turn this thing around for you. Yeah. So is he, he's not the 
end user then like he or he's not the no the mastermind of it all he's the, a player the 10x on, thing it's is, someone right? else's thing yeah and you blame it all on that or does this guy have some personal like some personal responsibility of his own oh definitely for sure but then there's there's people that you know teach these things and also try to get because like once once you master or get through their course on one business, the next business idea that they give to you is that you should teach this as well. And this should be because, you know, being online and creating your own personal brand is the next thing. And that's how all of this kind of snowballs and becomes an academy and a university. But no one that. no one gives a fuck if your personal brand is I'm going to stay home while my family goes to Mexico and work because I need to pay the bills. Like. No one gives <laughs> no one you're right. gives a fuck if that's you're your right. personal brand. Or like all day Sunday, I fucked with the tool trailer, getting new tires on it and getting it ready so that it could go out on Monday morning. That's the Paver King brand. Working on Sunday to try and get shit ready for Monday morning. And but no one gives a fuck about that or will pay to go to my academy to learn how to work on Sunday and get your shit ready to go out the door Monday. Like, but they will pay to learn how to fly on a fake private jet with a bunch yeah. of like prostitutes <laughs> i don't know if they're prostitutes i just added that in for effect for but effect. i just i'm just saying like they, there's no fucking way that people will pay for yeah a course of like what in my mind what it takes to be successful like there are some people that would pay for it probably but they won't like it Yep. Yeah. Personal sacrifice, hard work, hardly any wagyu steak. <laughs> early like, mornings, late nights. Early mornings, late nights. Yeah, it's like I people want instant height, you know, heightened success. Like it's a uh, very few Lambos. So still don't have mine. <laughs> still don't have mine. Well, guys, is that episode so, 100 and 101 in the bank? One, that is one episode 100 and 101 in the bank. This is the end of the episode. 